Good afternoon. It's Sunday, January 14th, 2024. And as the title says, what are we watching? Let's take a look at what we're watching. This is a full quote from William Shakespeare, and it's from the play As You Like It. If your eyes are rolling up in the back of your head, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate the 37 seconds of your time. Have a great day. I'll see you real soon. For the rest of us, this is pretty interesting. The first part of this quote from As You Like It is the most often quoted part. People don't quote the whole thing. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. So what does that mean to us? And what does that have to do with the title? What are we watching? We're watching an elaborate play based on real events in real people's lives. So your first question to me might be, well, what part are you playing? Thank you for asking. It's been my position to attempt to play narrator for two and a half years. On December 19th, 2023, I switched hats and split my main channel, the Alpaca main channel, and left my DIY content there, brought my social commentary, missing persons, and true crime commentary here. Let's quickly go p through the seven parts in storytelling, and this applies to fiction and nonfiction, including news reporting. Exposition, tell them what you're going to tell them. Rising action, show the players parts and get them interacting. Climax, bring all the pieces together to crisis. And by the way, crisis in this sort of scenario includes both positive and negative eventual outcomes. Let's move on. Falling action, leave the unimportant behind, focus on the main players. Resolution, show how the crisis ended. Denouement is a fancy French term, which is really just another word for resolution. And there are themes which all storytelling displays. Let's look at what the eight most common themes are in all storytelling. This is pretty familiar and self-explanatory. Good versus evil, one of the most pervasive themes in literature. The good versus evil theme pits a good character against an evil character in a classic battle of moral dilemmas. And there is also forbidden love, fated love, sacrificial love, and unrequited love, as well as coming of age, righteous justice, and unrighteous justice. Is this picture at all becoming a little more clear? Let's look at it in a different light. And YouTube has provided us with all these cute little icons that help us qualify what we say to other people in print, so let's use them. We naturally read left to right, so let's start in the lower left-hand corner with narration from the narrator. Could be a main character, could be a side character, or it could be me, somebody totally outside the story. Next, we see rising action, and then we see the climax, and then we see falling action, and finally, resolution. Depending on who's telling the story, these elements might be heard in different voices. If the characters are telling their own story, you might hear them talk in turn, and that is generally dialogue-driven storytelling. If a minor character or even a major character is doing the narration, you'll often hear first-person observations. I saw this, I did that, they showed me, and so forth. However, when it's narration or narrator-driven storytelling, it can get a whole lot more interesting and a whole lot more complex, depending on how the writer 
uses the narrator in the plot line. Let's take one more look at this in a different way. For those of you who like to read, I've created this graphic and I really wish I had gone full screen for this episode because the player, the narrator, is interjected into the story reads more like a sentence. So the narrator starts up by setting up the story just like in the previous graphic. However, the narrator's role is to direct your attention by either foreshadowing, introducing a character that has no role for quite some time in the storyline, or perhaps explaining the role of a character who seems not to have a good place in the story and the story develops from there. The narrator can break in at any time. The writer feels that the narrator would do a better job of moving the story along, especially in multi-theme stories. The most famous is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. If you read the book. But let's apply this to what we're actually witnessing in the last two years, actually 947 days, or two years, seven months, and two days. So you have your narrator, your main character, and two supporting characters for the first part of the story. However, one person is missing, so let's bring in that last person. Candace Hare. Summer Wells' grandmother. This is our cast for the story of Summer Wells. Summer Wells, her mother Candace Bly, H, a minor son of a former family friend, and finally Candace here, as we've said. If you have been following this case for as little as six months, you already know the storyline, and so I'm not going to retell the story. I've already told it twice on my other channel, and I don't feel it's necessary to retell the whole story in light of what we witnessed in the last week. I will say this. H drops out of the picture pretty quickly and has stayed, for the most part, out of the picture for two and a half years. And now that has changed. I don't want to drag this out, so I've already consumed seven or eight minutes of your time. I have something I have to do today that's very important, and so I will pick this up either later tomorrow tonight or early tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. I'll see you real soon.